Hello and welcome to Stop Gaps Home Practice. In this episode, I'm going to introduce a creative task from Artificial Things. Short clips from this season of Home Practice. Our disabled and non-disabled teachers dance and deliver their sessions in a brightly lit studio with a wooden floor. Pastel coloured geometric shapes glide across to reveal text inside the outline of a house. Home practice. Artificial things. Choreography task. Hello and welcome back. My name is Lucy. I'm a non-disabled white standing dancer. Today I'm wearing a red sweatshirt and purple trousers and I'm in a light bright studio and I'm sitting down. I'm going to introduce a creative task from Stop Gaps Artificial Things stage production, which is on the GCSE anthology. Now, for this task, you are going to need a notepad and pen or a device to write up your notes on, access to uh, some photos of you and access to some music that's personal to you, a small space and clothes that you can move in. So pause the video and meet me back here when you've got all those things. Great. So this is a creative task that I devised with Dave Tool. And the result was the solo at the end of Artificial Things that Dave dances in the jacket and in the spotlight. It's quite a personal solo in a small space and it's all to do with storytelling and memories. In Stopgap, we often work with lived experience of the dancers, interwoven with fiction and experiences that connect us. And so we're going to try and create a similar solo in this episode. And I'm going to support you to come up with four memories. So get comfortable, find somewhere that you feel safe. And if it's OK, close your eyes. I'm going to help you nudge that first memory. I want you to think about the first time you remember being creative. Try and find a memory of an experience of when you were first creative. It could be dressing up and putting on a show. It could be dancing to some music. Maybe it was painting, drawing, playing with Play-Doh, make-believe, creating a new game. Maybe it was experiencing a show or being taught a musical instrument. But as that memory starts to bubble up, start to create a bigger picture of that memory. Ask yourself some questions. How old were you? What time of year was it? Who was with you? What clothes were they wearing? What were you wearing? What were the sounds that you could hear and the colours you could see? And write down as much information about that memory. Okay, pause the video and get back to me when you've created that picture of your first memory of being creative. Great, hopefully you've got that memory and you've got a real rich, clear picture of it. Now we're going to physicalise that memory and I want you to find a gesture. Hmm, what's a gesture? Well, it's a physical action that sums up an emotion, opinion or an idea. In Artificial Things, Dave worked with his hands a lot, particularly in this last solo, so why not focus on your hands? I'll give you an example. My first memory of being creative was dancing to my dad's records on a record player. So I can really remember lifting the arm of the record player and nervously putting it onto the record and hearing that scratchy sound. So that would be my gesture to sum up my memory. Pause the video and get back to me when you have that first gesture. Great, so hopefully you've got your gesture. So let's move on to memory number two and let's do something easy. I'd like you to scroll through your phone or hunt out real photographs of you. Try and find one that's from quite a long time ago. So maybe find the oldest photo on your phone and try and find a photo when maybe you're not looking at the camera or at least that we can see 
more of your body and not just your head. Uh, if you don't have access to any photos of yourself or you're not so sure about doing this part of the task, I'm going to bring up a, a photo of me, a rather embarrassing photo of me that's coming on the screen right now. Um, and this is a photo that stirs up the memory of the first time we brought home my cat called Mishkin and he jumped onto my lap. So find a photo that stirs up a memory of you and a photo that's from a relatively long time ago. Pause the video and then meet me back here when you have that photo. Okay, so hopefully you've got a photo and if you haven't, you can use the picture of me. So now what I'd like you to do is recreate this physical image of the photo. And I'd like you to do it moment by moment, a little bit like you're in a stop action animation and you're being manipulated by an animator. So for instance, I would do one leg, then the other leg, then an arm, then an arm, then I might do my torso and my skull, and then I would bring the expression into my face. So build it up muscle by muscle, moment by moment, and the more details you can put in, the more stages, the more interesting this image is gonna be. So pause the video, build up your photo, and then meet me back here. Great, hopefully you've got your memory number one, which was a gesture, and your memory number two, which is the photograph that you build up. So now we're gonna find memory number three. I want you to think of an act of kindness or an act of friendship that you can remember. It can be recent or it can be further in the past. It could be something that you did for somebody else or something that somebody did for you. And you don't have to tell anyone about this, just make some notes on this memory of kindness or friendship. Start to note down all the details as we did in the first memory. What were you wearing? What time of day was it? Can you remember the sounds, the colors? Who was there with you? What was the texture, the temperature? And again, write it all down. So pause the video, find somewhere quiet and try to create a really full picture of this memory of kindness or friendship. Okay, so you have your memory of friendship or kindness. And we're now going to try and create some abstract movement for this memory. So what's abstract? Well, it's not a mime. We're not gonna try and recreate something realistically. We're not even gonna do an exaggerated mime. We're gonna use movement to encompass, express the feelings and the sensations, but using texture, rhythm, pattern, and movement. I'm gonna break it down for you because I always get a little bit confused between gesture, exaggerated gesture, and then abstract. So, my memory is of one of my friends seeing that my son quite recently was unwell and rushing to get some medicine for me to calm my son down. I remember having my son on my hip and kind of rocking him because he was crying very loudly and I had my arm on a very fire, uh, heavy fire exit door as people kind of rushed past me as my friend told me she had some medicine. So this would be my gesture. Now an exaggerated version of that might be that I might add in the frenzy and the panic that I felt. So I might be a bit of a turn but that's still not abstract. You can kind of still see that there's some sort of storytelling going on there. Now, if I just try to think about the sensations, I remember the kind of frenzy inside and the chaos. And then I also remember the calmness once my son settled when he had the medicine and being really grateful that my friend had brought it in her bag. So my abstract movement might be So that's the sense of frenzy and then the sense of calm. So take your time with this. Try not to pop in your favorite moves that show what a great dancer you are or worry about what it looks like. 
Just try to really use all that information that you've noted down in your notebook about the memory and try to create a movement that encompasses or expresses those sensations and feelings of that memory. Good luck. Pause the video and meet me back here when you're finished. Okay, so hopefully you've got memory number one, a gesture, memory number two, the build-up photo, and memory number three, the abstract movement. So let's finish with the final memory, number four. I'd like you to go back to your photos if you can. They can be real photos that you printed out or you can go on your phone. Scroll through and try and find a picture of a group of people. Could be your family, could be your siblings, could be your friends. You can be in this group or you could be taking the picture. Um, if you don't have access to your photos or your phone, you can use the photo that I'm bringing up on the screen right now. This is an image of the Artificial Things cast with a few other members of Stopgap Dance Company and it was just before our premiere of Artificial Things at Sadler's Wells. So you can use this image or pause the video and find an image of you with a group of friends or just a group of people that you've taken a picture of. So hopefully you've got your image now. Um, and I'm interested in you kind of finding, stealing some movement from this image. So it might be you have to imagine what came before the photo or after the photo. And then I want you to use that movement that you found from looking at this photo and imagining what came just before or what happened just after. And I want you to repeat it like you get caught in a loop and try and create a little bit of a boomerang effect that you would find on an Instagram. So I'm going to take uh, Nadan, I think. He's quite low down. He's leaning right over his thighs. He's got hand on David and he looks like he's just doing this gesture. So I'm going to repeat it and get caught in that loop. So pause the video, steal some movement and then create that boomerang effect and meet me back here when you have all four memories ready to go. Okay, so that was phase one where we gathered movement, material, memories, a little bit like research. Now we're going to move on to phase two which is where we flesh out the solo and develop it into something that you could perform. So Dave did this by putting on a track of music that was really personal to him. And then he drifted in and out of the movements, the gestures, the memories in a form of improvisation. He was playing with finding a way to flow the solo, finding out which movement, which gesture transitioned into the next with ease. He then started to add movement in between each gesture, and this is something you could do. So in between each memory, you can find a movement that will link it to the next memory, or two movements. Could be a sway, a turn, a glide, a tilt, a tip, a wheelie, whatever's useful and whatever feels right for that movement. Now be warned, this isn't the point where you add in all the tricks and the dance moves that show you off as a skilled dancer. This is a solo about storytelling and revealing a little bit about who you are as a person. And this can be really powerful. Now Dave danced it in a spotlight, so he didn't have much room. So think about scale and keeping it small, a little bit like a close-up in a film. You might want to add in pauses to let the audience really drink in what you're communicating. And you might also want to repeat some of those motifs that you feel are really strong. Finally, see if you can pin it to a track of music that's personal to you. This could be a hymn, a lullaby, maybe a theme tune from your favourite cartoon when you were little. It could be the radio, it could be the football commentary that was on on the weekend. Whatever sounds or songs conjure up memories of your past, 
Put those on in the background and choose one that you think might suit this very personal, intimate solo. Dave chose the track Sunshine of Your Smile because this was a song that his father sang in the Working Man's Clubs of Leeds. And this was because that's what the solo was about. It was about his relationship with his dad and how they were both performers. And all the things that Dave would have liked to have told or shared with his dad before he passed away. So I'm going to share a little bit of Dave's solo now so you can see the result of this creative task when we were working on artificial things. I would love to see your version, so please tag us in your social media at Stopgap Dance and comment below to let me know how you got on with this task. And we're also always available for workshops face to face or online to do with artificial things. Thank you for watching and good luck with this creative task. Home Practice, Stopgap Dance Company.